Hey everyone, I'm BJ and this is Brickhouse Builds. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your water pump mechanical seal using the SHEP method on a Honda GL500 Silverwing, but this method can be applied to multiple bikes within the CX or GL line. As this video applies to multiple models though, I won't be showing specific disassembly or reassembly methods, so be sure to reference your service manual for correct information there. Beyond that, you should find this video very helpful, so let's jump right into it. So you need to be very careful where you pry on this thing. There's a little spot right here. You can use a little bit of force on. And then over on Dan's side, let me show you that. This area back here, generally pretty good to pry from, but again, don't go putting excessive force on either side. You wanna do it little bit by little, wiggle it, and get it free. Yeah, so the polo mint actually stayed on the end of it. Which is fine. So that's your rubber seal in there. There's going to be your thrust washer in there. If not, maybe it's still stuck here. Yeah. You just pick that out by hand? Yeah. Whoa. Right there, that's your thrust washer. You definitely gotta hold on to that. Yep, came right out. Okay. Okay, so here on the table, we have the actual mechanical seal. Then we have what's known as the polo mint. This is your thrust washer. You want to make sure you do not lose this. The secondary part of the seal that actually goes into the impeller. We have the water pump impeller itself. We'll get this cleaned up. Copper sealing washer or crush washer. So we are going to either, you either want to replace this or re-anneal it. I'll show you how to re-anneal it. And then of course the nut. So this is a very lightly torqued nut. I think like 17 inch pounds, something like that. But that is the entire water pump mechanical seal system. Now before we go any further, I wanna give a breakdown of how this thing works. So up front, obviously this video is all about the water pump mechanical seal. So we have coolant circulating all throughout this space. And this seal right here is what keeps the coolant from going back into the engine. Now on this side, may not be as familiar, we have another seal. And this one is actually the camshaft seal. So this seals the oil from this compartment over here. So, so two seals keep the liquids from intermixing with each other. Now in between these two seals, you have what's called the weep hole here. And this, that little hole right there, goes up here. And basically just to the inside of that oil seal. Now it's very important that that passageway is clear because if this seal starts failing and it starts pushing coolant actually into that, uh, that gap in between those two, that passageway is what allows that coolant to run out. And if it's blocked, it can create pressure and then force its way into the engine oil crankcase. And you don't want coolant in there, that's bad. So I'm gonna grab a drill bit and I will just show you guys how to clean this thing out by hand. Now to clean this out, I just have a 764 bit. So very carefully insert that 
we're just doing this by hand. We're not using any actual power tools. Just run that in where we can. Try to drag out some of that gunk that's in there. I'm actually going to pull this off and do it just with my fingers, but it's very important we get that cleared off. So you can see the tip of the drill bit right there, just behind that oil seal. A lot of junk in there. That's why it's very important to have this cleared out. you have an egg we could try first? And maybe an egg, I don't know. <laughs> we might be able to do that. So Spit it on there. we've got the uh, hot plate going. Now the attempt for this, I just want to heat it equally. I've seen people use just like a lighter or torch, not saying there's anything wrong with that. I need one of these anyway. So we're going to try to he evenly heat this thing from the bottom until we see it start uh, smoking a little bit. And then from there we should be able to kind of grab onto the bottom gently as well as the top and separate these two once the adhesive lets go. And then from there we can re-adhesive it and install it back in the other bike. Now for the GL500 we're doing, the diameter here is correct. So if you did have the case off, you could directly swap this, no problem. But if you're doing this on a CX500, that's why we're doing the Shep method. They don't offer the smaller diameter uh, cage here. Sorry about the autofocus. Yeah, they do not offer this, uh, the smaller version of this, so you actually have to do this method or you bore out the hole. So for us though, because we don't want to pull the engine or pull the uh, rear cover off, this is the method we're going to go with. Okay, got the hot plate going. Who knows what temperature it is, but go ahead and get that thing set on there. We're gonna look for it to burst into flames and then we're gonna quickly pull it apart. I'm not sure how sarcastic you guys want me to be in a tutorial, but there's gonna be some sarcasm. Take, just do as I do, as I do not as I say. I mean, it's been on there a minute. I'm gonna just try. Try to pick it up from the top and see how very carefully here. Not done. Turn it over. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, if we rotate it 90 degrees, it helps. I think I just saw smoke. Try it again. I can hear it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I could hear the glue pop once or twice, and then that's when I knew. So. I didn't really see any smoke, but I don't know. That it told me. So there you go. And that took probably like just like a little bit of force. It, I didn't have to like really pull it. You could just you could feel it, you know. Okay, on the table we have all of our components, and it's time to to now clean everything up, and then we will start our assembly. So to clean it, we're going to use a little bit of acetone, another rag. So we want to make sure we get the polo mint apart along with the seal here and clean those. We'll clean the carbon seal portion, make sure we don't have any debris in the back side of this. And then start getting it together. Now on assembly, our first step, we go to get a little Dawn soap. It doesn't really have to be Dawn, but that's what we use. Everything nice and slick. Install this into the impeller. Same thing on the Polo Mint. So 
our thrust washer we'll put on the cam. But now we can go ahead and actually put our mechanical seal back in the engine and then that will be ready to go ahead and set on top of it. Okay, so we got the copper washer here. We're going to re anneal it so we get it nice and hot, red hot. And we're just going to let it cool down naturally. So to seal this thing, we're going to use the Permatex 22071. What we're going to be doing is adding a little film of this on our uh, sealing surface right there, and then we will go ahead and install this into the uh, original mechanical seal uh, bucket, so to speak. Now this has already been cleaned out. It's, we've used acetone on it, so it's dry and it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a nice film on here. It doesn't have to be too crazy, I don't think, and then we'll go ahead and install it. All right, so we have our mechanical seal here, the one we removed from the other bucket. Put a little film on here and get this installed back on the bike. And the reason we're using this, which is more of a water pump specific type sealant, is because it's resistant to ethylene glycol, which is what your coolant is made out of most of the time. Okay, I'm confident with that. We've already cleaned it. And then the two tangs in here, we need to make sure we line up with the pieces on the bike. So we're going to go ahead and get the camera set up and be right back with you. Okay. Oop, I can feel a clock that only wants to stay one way. So that's in there. Now we can do our thrust washer. You do not want to forget this. Now we have the impeller. Everything's lubricated. Okay. We're going to go grab the... Uh, crush washer, get the nut on here, and then we will torque it. All right, we're gonna get this thing pushed on where it needs to go. Got a copper crush, crush washer. We're gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on here. And then I know I said an incorrect torque figure earlier, but we're going to go with 90 inch pounds. So should be pretty light. Feel it starting to seat. Here we go. Okay, this is done up, and now we're going to just let this sit overnight before we go ahead and do our final assembly with the uh, water pump cover and add coolant and all that stuff. So we will tune back in tomorrow. Okay. I say go for it. Fuel's off. Um, turn it on.
these things up and going. There's no evidence of a leak right now, but we're going to give it a couple hundred miles and just keep keep assessing it. But uh, we should be good to go. Hopefully this video is really helpful for you guys. I know I've been requested a lot of times to do the uh, Shep method, so this is fun. Anyway, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll have everything linked down below, so be sure to check the description, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. And like, I heard that and I was like, kid, because I was homeschooled and we would make ramen noodles all the time. So we'd be you like- You say ramen noodles? Ra Did I say ramen? Yeah, I say ramen, ramen noodles. Ramen noodles, what? I buy ramen, ramen noodles. Ramen, ramen, <laughs> Hey, that stems from me being a homeschooled top, kid. And top I ramen. just read it how I read it. And that's, like, that's my uh, vocabulary.